In today's world of technology and medical breakthroughs, we're going to live four lives in the span of one. I don't care if you're 16 or 66, it's never too late to chase your dream. Thanks for joining us on Coffee with Jake G tonight. I'm simply here to help people um, achieve their dreams, discover their dreams, and remove roadblocks um, that are keeping you from, from doing that. So uh, let's get started tonight, and uh, let's take our first call. Katie from St. Louis. Katie, how you doing tonight? Hello. Hi, Katie. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. Good. Well, welcome to Coffee with Jake G. Um, what, what can we help you with tonight? I guess just give me some advice on what to do next and where I should go and what path I should, I guess, take to get there and be successful in adulting, I guess. Okay, okay. Can, can, can give, it, give me a little background. Where, where are you coming from? Okay, so I did a lot of um, adult entertainment work all over uh, the United States, and um, that includes magazine covers and webcam and things like that. So okay. now I um, I got into a wreck May 21st, 2019. Oh, wow. I I'm should sorry. have died in that accident, for sure. So, like, like you said you almost died? Yes. Um, <clears throat> five broken ribs a broken pelvis, um, lacerated liver, lung, and oh, wow. kidney, and then my spleen was so bad they removed it. I'm sorry to hear that. Sorry to hear that. Um, so you're okay now, I'm assuming? Yes. Good. But, um, I, I mean, since I, since I should have died, and I know I should have died, I decided to turn to my faith more, and I decided that the work I was doing at the time of my accident was not in the right, um, on the right path at all for wanting to have my faith be stronger and everything else with God and to make my bond stronger with him. Okay. So I stopped webcamming, stopped doing nude photo shoots, stopped, um, I guess, trying to be temptation for married men and such okay okay well um wow that's uh that's a that's a way to break in a a, a a show tonight katie um so first of all let me let me say thank you uh for coming on i'm glad that you're you're healthy and you're doing better and then uh last but not least thank you for being strong enough to uh to embrace your faith and step away from an occupation which i'm sure was um, very lucrative for you, but probably left you feeling um, incredibly empty and unfulfilled. Um, so that takes a lot of strength to walk away from that. Um, so let me let me commend you for that. And uh, so let's let's get into let's get into what we do. Um, I'm just going to use some principles that I've learned um, from my mentors, and and um, um, let's see if we can help you find a, a, a new direction for your life and a, and a career that you enjoy because really um, when it comes down to it um, we we define success by our happiness and not necessarily our pocketbook and and that's uh that's going to be important so let's kind of let's kind of dive into this for the next few minutes and, and see what we can see what we can come out with katie does that sound all right okay okay perfect so i'm going to take some notes while we're while we're talking here um, if you talked, Katie, to your to your friends and your family, what would they say are your talents? Like, what are you good at? Um, I'm good with kids. I'm really good with kids. Uh, they seem to like me. Mm, I can draw pretty good. Uh, I'm very social. Okay. Hmm. So, I'm pretty handy. I like to do a lot of like Pinterest, re, like Pinterest crafts and stuff like that. So okay, always then like pick up tools every once in a while and do some handy stuff. Okay, all right. Um, what? 
Let's go back to the let's go back to the kids. The kids when when it come when you say you're good with kids, what does that look like? Um, they just have fun and they interact with me as a friend more than and so they they listen to me because I'm their friend and they want to make me happy because they don't want to upset their friend and so they're just good for me. And okay. I like hanging out with the little kids and doing makeup and dolls and race cars and Nerf guns. Neat. And you got a, it sounds like you've got a, you've got a youngster behind you. Do what? You, it sounds like you have a youngster in the background there. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Very cool. Okay. So what about the drawing? You, you draw, how often do you draw? What do you draw? What do you enjoy drawing? Um, I used to draw. I haven't drawn in a while, um, but I draw like landscape pictures, um, like mainly like lakes and trees and flowers and things like that. I can draw people, but uh, I draw them more as characters, like cartoon characters. Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. When 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 your friends and family describe you. What are the what are they what are your what do they say your your best characteristics are? What do you feel like your best characteristics are? Um, probably uh, all of my friends just say I'm too nice. Okay. So I don't know if that's necessarily a good thing or a bad thing. So so you have you have a good heart, right? You could you could just sum that up and say you have a really really good heart and you're exceptionally caring. I guess yes. Okay. All right. And what I, else? I forgive really easy. So okay. Okay. That's uh, a, one of my weaknesses and my strengths, I suppose. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, okay. What else? So you're you're overly nice. You you're easily forgiving. Um, what else? What else do What else do you think are your strong characteristics? Hmm. You said you said above under talents that you're social. What does that look like for I'm you? I'm very I'm very social. Okay. Um, I'm just. Friendly. I have an inviting look, I guess. Like, I don't, I look like I, I'm approachable and nice, and you can just tell me how your day has been, even if I don't know you. Okay. Like, and I'll listen. So, would you, would you rather spend a day out in public and with, with people, or would you rather spend the day at home on your own? Mm, I like it about 50 50. Like, if I've been home alone all day, then I'll leave and I'll go out to the grocery store. Or... Okay. okay. All right. Let's go for that. Now, let me ask you this next question, and this is probably the most important. Katie, if you, if you could do one thing, or what's the one thing that you enjoy the most, that when you're doing it, time just flies by and you have the most fun, what is that one thing? <clears throat> uh, hanging out with my son. Okay. Now let me change. Let me change that question for you. If you look at your hobbies, okay, the things that you do for yourself that you enjoy, what what do what what are those? I really like kayaking. Okay. And yoga. I love yoga. Okay. Um, and <clears throat> believe it or not, I like pole fitness. It's fun. It's a good workout and a lot of time goes by really fast and then all of a sudden your whole body is sore. Okay. Okay. All right. But then, you know, but I used to use that for work as well. So I try to, I don't know, it's hard yeah. to cut no, out certain things, but <clears throat> accept some and be like, okay, well, I'm not going to do this, but I'm going to go ahead and do this. Sure. Sure. Okay. No, I understand. I understand. Um, Okay, and lastly but not least, um, is there is there a group of people that you really relate to? Like, have you felt um, a calling or in your heart, in your gut, do you feel like there are a group of people that you would like to reach out to? Like, I feel like everybody in this world, no matter what their job, their occupation is, um, we're all here for a purpose, and that is to help other people and serve other people. You, you talk about kids a lot. I mean, do you feel like that's your, that's your mission, that's your calling? Um, 
more than just it would be more than just kids like I grew up in foster care and um, so it would be like young foster girls that okay. don't have a father and don't have somebody to tell them hey no you probably shouldn't get into this world even though it's a lot of money and they don't have the right guidance I guess that's who I would reach out to the most is like the young fun pretty foster girls that are going to go make bad choices and they don't know what they're getting into but I can tell them it's not pretty even though it looks really pretty it's not right okay so so let's let's just build around that right now because just listening to you talk about that you can you can tell number 1 you have a personal story with it number 2 you have there, like there's there's something embedded in that. There's a there's a passion in that for you. Um, so let's let's start with that. So let's look at careers that could help that particular young female foster. Let's let's look at that a little bit and let's combine that with some of the things that you've already talked about, um, specifically your hobbies. And I want to highlight yoga, um, and I want to highlight crafting and Pinterest, and I want to highlight drawing. Um, think about think about what is what is a way that you could intertwine yoga with that genre of young female f- girls in foster care. Does anything stick in your head? Does anything come to mind when you do that? I mean, like like a meeting or something at the park where we all just talk and then do some yoga and then an, another girl talks and then we do some more yoga. I don't. I mean, yeah, no, that's no. the thing coming to my mind. But yeah. if there's, I would love to one day become a foster parent or something, but. And then the other issue is that I don't have any schooling. I mean, right out of right at eighteen, I went and did that in the sex industry. So. Right, right, right. Well, here's here's what we know. We know that that as important as college is in today's world of technology and entrepreneurship, a degree is not necessary in a, in a lot of in a lot of realms. But let's keep let's keep playing with this. <laughs> Let's keep, let's keep playing with this idea because sometimes our hobbies and our side hustles can turn into careers down the road. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay, so let me, let me paint a picture for you. Let me, let, me, let me paint a picture. You've also talked about drawing. What if you started, what if you started an art class or a drawing class and you reached out to foster care agencies in your area of St. Louis and you said, hey, I'm going to start <clears throat> this project and I would like it if you would let your your female participants between the ages of 11 and 15 know that this is available to them. And if they're interested in learning art or coming to a group um, where where they can be expressive and they can learn to um, use different techniques. Like, what if you started a volunteer group and a class? Like, so I'm thinking I'm thinking right now. You started a Facebook group and you targeted the parents of these children because that's how you're going to get access to foster kids, right? Like, you can't just call a foster agency and they're not going to give you phone numbers. However. Um, I know that there are a ton of online foster groups um, that have, um, we, we were actually, my tour was sponsored by a foster care agency um, from Kansas, Oklahoma, Texas, and Missouri. Um, and they, they have parent groups on there. You make a simple post saying, hey, we have a new program for teenage girls that does this, this, and this, and this, and this. And and the reason I, I want you to approach it like that is it lets the parents get their way in. Um, it also gives them a chance to meet you and you to tell them their story. And also, I think it will work because um, we all know that raising teenage girls 
is difficult. It's a difficult time for the, for the teenage girl. It's a difficult time for the parent. Parents are always looking for help and ways to communicate and, and deepen that relationship with their child and especially in the foster care system. So I think like, I think you need to build your career over, over your mission. <clears throat> in everything that we've talked about tonight, the one thing that you seem the most passionate about and that you have the most experience is, is, is your journey. Like I hear this phrase all the time and, and it's, it's phrased differently, you know, in different ways, but your, your difficulties are your mission. you know, like, like there was a reason that, um, you went through what you went through, Katie, and, and from, from your past you're, there's a reason that you were in foster care and some people will look at that as a crutch and some people will look at that as a hardship and yes it was and I'm sure that it was very difficult however you you've come out of that Katie and and you like God has planted this seed in your heart that there's a there's a mission there's a mission in your heart and you just told us exactly what it is like you know how difficult it was to be a teenage girl in a foster home and you know how tempting um, it is to take, I have, a, I have a phrase that I love and that is, that is hurt hurts. You know, when you're hurting, um, they're looking for things that make them feel better. And in the short term, the world that you got into, the money was quick, the money was easy, the rewards were there. And then what was left? Nothing but more hurt. And, and so I just really, really feel strong in talking to you tonight that your mission of helping teenage girls needs to be your focus for your career. And I, and I don't think you need to jump into it full speed. I think, I think starting a, a Facebook group and getting and reaching out to, to foster care groups on Facebook in your area and starting a program for teenage girls Man, I think that would open so many doors for you to the point where you may say, hey, I want to get into social work. Like you'll find the side of that program where there's flaws, where that you can step in and help. And that may be on the administration side. You may you may find out that you as much as you have passion to help young teenage girls, you may find that you're more effective and you have a stronger passion on the directive side in organizing um things for parents and get into the administration. You may, you may find that your heart is more one-on-one -on -one and you want to become a social worker and, and work with families one-on-one -on -one with an emphasis for teenage girls. Or you may just decide that, hey, you're going to create a program, you're going to create a nonprofit organization for young foster girls to help them uh, get into the workforce and get into schools um, and colleges. Like I really think that right now, um, you should explore this, this mission that is in your heart to help young teenage foster girls. And I would start um, by, by using some of your talents, like you said, drawing, um, Pinterest, and uh, arts and crafts. There, that's unlimited. You could, you could create an art and craft session and every, every, every week you could do a new project. Um, and I'd be more than happy to help you reach out to corporations to fund something like that, where they buy your supply projects every weekend um, or every week or when you do that. Like, like I'm, do you feel that? Do you feel what I'm feeling? <laughs> I think it's a wonderful idea. I like, like the does it excite idea you? of like guiding them and teaching them like there is better options, even though they feel like there's nothing and like, they transfer school so many times and their credits don't transfer and that there's other, there's other options besides just going out there and making money that way. Like I feel like I should have resources readily available to tell them and be like, okay, so you could do this instead. Yeah, no, exactly. I just, I just so wanna... I've got some studying to do as well, but I mean, it would be, I think it would make me feel good and it would make my heart feel good to help girls stay away from the same things I've been through. I do too. I do too. Like I feel really, really strong if this is something that you should, you should explore immediately because I think you'll find, you'll, you'll find really quick. Um, it's either going to energize you or it's going to drain you. And I, I really just, just talking to you, like I feel the energy from it and I'm not even involved in it. Um, 
<laughs> I, I, I feel the energy from that. So I think, I think that's a really, really big avenue for you to pursue. And, and uh, I, think, I think that'll open a ton of doors for you. Um, like I said, you're, you're extremely um, driven in, in, in your past career. And, um, you know, you have, you have experiences that a lot of people don't. And I, and I think that a lot of people will be able to relate to you, especially in that age, in that genre. I just, I, th I think God has spoken to you and, and you need to pursue that. And, uh, and, and it could be wrong, but I, I really don't think so. I feel really strong about it. I think that, that your mission is really clear and you need to, you need to explore that. Okay. Well, I will definitely, I mean, I have old connections with like my, SRS worker at St. Francis and <clears throat> all these different um, foster parents and stuff I could reach out to and see where they're going through. Yeah. That I guess um, if that you... way I could try to connect with <clears throat> foster girls. But I also don't know that they'll let me with my history and my past and what I've done. Sure. If sure. I'm even, you know, like. Sure. So I guess we'll just see. Yeah, no. So if you if you Google you Google um, Missouri or even even St. Louis foster care parents on Facebook groups, I, I guarantee you it will come up. And you make one post and say, "Hey, we want to start working." I say, "I want to start working." We're gonna do just whatever it is. Either it's an art project or it's um, you know every every week you you pick a Pinterest topic. Um, whatever it is, or it's a yoga class, you know, do things that you, you don't enjoy. Think that they would instantly be against the idea, knowing that I am an ex porn star. Nope. And nope. be like, nope, I'm not going to let my not at all. You know, you know why? Her. You know why they're not going? Why they're not going to think that? Because you're going to tell them your story. You're going to tell them where you came from. You're going to tell them about your car accident and how you almost died on the side of a road. And you're going to tell them about your belief in God and now why you believe that car accident happened and what you want to come out of that. So, so yes, if you just said, hey, I'm an ex-porn star and I want to work with your teenage daughter, yeah, no. But if you put your story out there and you, your testimony is your testimony, Katie, they're not, no one's going to deny that. They can't take that from you and you're going to give that to them. And they're going to know, I talked to you for five minutes or whatever it is. And I know that your heart is genuine and true. They're going to, they're going to pick up on that right away. Absolutely. So that's your, that's your key is it's just authenticity. It's just being genuine with, with who you are and, and communicating that to them. Um, it's, it's no different than a recovering alcoholic starting um, an AA program, you know, who better to help people get out or stay away from a program that's been there. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. So just use your story. Use your story and your testimony and remind parents that this is a vulnerable, vulnerable age and a vulnerable position for these teenage girls to be in. And it, you're going to be a reminder to them of what can happen if we don't allow our teenage girls a healthy productive emotional and physical outlet for the trauma that they're experiencing then this is the road that they could go down of however you're here to show them there's an alternative so so just just keep your focus don't don't let don't let the negative voices on this side overcome the positive voices on this side and you're going to do that by remembering where you came from remembering what happened to you and remembering what pulled you out and then telling that story over and over and over and over again. Okay. Sound good? Yeah, sounds great. Well, Katie, thanks for joining us tonight on Coffee with JG. Um, what started off to be, uh, like, you'll, you'll see it when you watch the video cast back. You, my eyes just kind of, like, open big. It's like, oh, my gosh, what are we getting into? Um, but we got into something really good. And um, so, so thank you for sharing your story. And more importantly, um, thank you for, for letting us help you um, kind of bring this mission out because I'm super excited for you. And um, I think you're going to well, do... And I hope I get to call back in the future and it's successful and it 
like takes off and something cool happens. So. Yeah, and the moment the moment you get your program started and things start rolling, send us some video, send us some audio clips. Um, we'll sh we'll share it with everybody. Absolutely, very much. And like I said, okay. when it comes time to fund some of these projects, let me know. Um, we've got corporate connections all over St. Louis, and we'd love to help. I'm sure they would. So absolutely, mm -hmm. cool. Thanks for joining us tonight, Katie. I appreciate it. Thanks, Jake. You bet. Thanks for joining me tonight with Coffee with Jake G. That was obviously um, an unexpected um, but interesting and turned out to be very productive um, call. So if you have a dream that you're not sure how to achieve or you're not sure what your talents and what your dreams really are, um, give us a call, 615-934-5541, uh, and we will um, return that phone call as quick as possible and get you on next week's episode. Or you can reach me at jake at jakegill.net, and we'll try to get your, um, your dream started. Coffee with Jake G, thank you so much. I think success should be measured by your happiness, not your pocketbook. You've got to figure out what makes you happy and how to turn that into a career. If you love the process and not the prize, you'll always win. In today's world,